So these are the stages. So have a careful look at these steps, have a careful look at the stages, and we're gonna use the same stages to prove, and let's prove that hyperbolic cost is even, as I said, yeah? So let's continue on the reverse. So let's use these stages on the reverse. Let's prove that hyperbolic cos is even, okay? So here's the proof. So step number one. So previously, you need to let f of x, in our case now, it's gonna be hyperbolic cos x. Previously it was hyperbolic sine. So let me let f of x, so continue over here. So I hope you guys can see it. So let's let f of x equal hyperbolic cos, okay? And in step number two, so if you go to the definition, okay, for it to be even, f of minus x equals minus f of x. So once again, um, no, 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 sorry, not odd, even. So let's go to this one, so forgive me for that. So f of minus x equals f of x. So we need to um, use and try and see whether if we calculate f of minus x for hyperbolic cos, we're gonna get f of x. So again, as we've done in step number two for hyperbolic sine, okay, let's start off with f of minus x on the left-hand side, and let's try and get f of x on the right, okay? So let's use the definition. So in this case, let's calculate f of minus x. Okay, just to remind ourselves, here's the definition of hyperbolic cos. It's e to the x plus e to the minus x over two. So to get f of minus x, replace all of the x's in your definition by minus x. So you're gonna have e to the power minus x plus e to the minus of a minus x, okay, divided by two, okay? So if we get rid of the brackets, so if we remove the brackets, let's have a look at what we're gonna have. So if we remove the brackets, e to the minus x plus e to the power, minus into minus is a plus, so e to the plus x over two, Okay, and as you can see, this is f of x. So this is the same as the definition of hyperbolic cos, yeah? So um, let's just make it more apparent. If I swap the terms in a numerator, okay? So giving me e to the x plus e to the minus x over two, going backwards, this is precisely the definition of hyperbolic cos. Yep. So in this case, this is f of x. So let's conclude with step number three. So going back to our uh, definition for even functions. So since f of minus x is indeed f of x, that means we've got an even function for hyperbolic cos. So let's conclude since f of x equals, or f of minus x equals, in our case, f of x. Therefore, hyperbolic cos is indeed even. Okay, so that concludes the proof. Okay.